All right, all right, all right, all right. Let's get to it. Let's get to it. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. Okay, this is Dr. Chef, Dr. Chef's Crypto. <clears throat> this is the dead center of the third quarter, 2022. This is the middle of August. So, there's been a little bump we're going to take a look at. We're going to try to figure out what's going on. And most importantly, we want to see if we are still matching the pattern that we've been in for years and years and years. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I would direct you to previous videos uh, about a macro pattern. Um, I have about a dozen videos about that. I have about 90 total videos, 100 videos out on here. Um, all different links, all different subjects in the world of crypto and finance. Um, before I go any further, I'm not an official financial advisor. Um, it's education and entertainment. You know, it's not somebody you paid to advise you. I don't say, hey, do all these things. I'm just going to give you some information. Um, and we're going to talk about how the systems work and what's really going on. And you can do your own research and figure out what you want to do, but uh, that's who I am. Um, crypto content that is fun and interesting and hopefully helpful, which is the main desire. Now, for the past um, couple years, we've been talking about a macro pattern. I don't know why. We're one of the only people talking about this macro pattern because it seems to be dominating everything. And it seems to have been doing so for 12 years. For some reason, people are stuck in what's happening right now. The last week, the last minute. I, I don't know what's going on. I'm assuming that since a lot of day traders use one hour or even 15 minute type charts, that they're used to uh, a ton of chart information revolving around a day or two or a week. Um, I think that's very dangerous. Um, is it possible to make a bunch of money like that? Sure, if you're really smart on top of it, multiple screens uh, and analysis studies, all that. I mean, yeah. Uh, you can make money like that. I did a video at one point in time on a five-minute trade where I analyzed the situation, made some money right, right quick, but that's not recommended. What I'm talking about is long-term people that are in crypto for real, not people that heard about it from a friend at the office, decided to buy some Dogecoin or something, and now they're confused. That is, unfortunately, about 75% of the people in crypto. So this is why they've stopped talking. The reason that all those people have stopped talking is because they were freaking out about how awesome this world was in 2021 when we had a very bullish year with two all-time high sections, um, just millionaires being made every day and completely awesome end of the world type coolness going on. Then, of course, it crashes in the early 22 and now we've been spending the whole year in the dumper and people are worried about things like a move from 22 to 24 like it's some big deal because of course they've been seeing things go below 20 and they're panicking I'm talking about the Bitcoin price anyway Bitcoin drives the whole market if you don't already know that so I monitor the Bitcoin price primarily uh, not a lot of major moves happen outside of the Bitcoin uh, movements if you see a giant spike it's because Bitcoin is is spiking for most of the cases like 95 99 percent of the cases anyway um people that know the macro pattern from 2018 2014 um everything's been happening since 2010 for 12 years people that track that micro pattern which appear to be about five or ten percent of the people in crypto which is about 5 or 10% ten, ten of the population. So we're talking about less than 1% of the people. Um, I'm going to guess a couple hundred thousand people have any real clue what's going on. Um, and most of them don't do any kind of content. And the people who do content are trying to make things interesting week to week. So they tend to focus on some small thing that's happening now. We don't do that. We're talking about bigger patterns, longer patterns. Um, and... In that case, we're in really good shape. But, you know, let's check it. And that's what we're here for. We're going to do a middle of the third quarter update because right now, in the middle of the third quarter, we should be having a little tiny bump, not too big. And if we see that on our charts, if we see that um, in the predictions, 
Um, other, the other day I told them uh, I didn't look at any charts or any um, websites for a couple of days just to prove a point and then I told them what the price was going to be and it, it, it was right and it, it, it always is and it's not that I'm some kind of genius it's just a pattern it's just pattern recognition and it's um it's tracking so I'll show you what I mean let's go uh, back to the screen here and take a look at this you'll see Bitcoin's up you'll see it's been up for a little while if you look at the month you'll see giant holes that we have been in you'll see it's been up a little bit here and as we sit here today Bitcoin is sitting at about 24.5. Now, let's talk about what that means. So the all-time high is at the 60s. So this is roughly uh, a little, a little, little more than a third of the all-time high. So this is something like 35%, um, give or take. You could do the math on that. But the high around 67, 68 was back in November. We are about nine months after uh, the all-time high, give or take. So let's just see if that means anything. So we pop out here, and I go over here, and I grab this analysis, okay? And this thing you've seen before. This is all the work that I've done for a very long period of time, tracking every single thing that ever happened from 2010 all the way to now with all kinds of different formulas and charts and it's tracking a pattern as I've mentioned before the pattern is 2018, 2014, uh, 2022 um, so it was 13, 17 and 21 where all time highs existed it was 12 um, when the halving occurred uh, it was uh, 16 when the halving occurred. It was 2020 when the halving occurred. The next year was the all-time high at the end of that year. That's an obvious pattern. Uh, the next year, it went into the toilet. Uh, we've attracted, you know, we've tracked exactly that. So what should we be looking at around now? We're about nine uh, months out. And we've noticed that one of the things that has happened differently is that the actual um, decreases and increases have been greater. Now let me go over that. We dropped below 20 briefly, which would have been lower than expected. That's lower than uh, 30. You know, it's more like almost a quarter, you know, it's, you know of the all-time high. So... You know, when you're talking about 25%, that's a rare number. But I want you to look at this. What you can see on your screen right here is all the months of 14 and 18. Remembering that 14, 18, and 22 all match. Well, if you look at that, you'll notice that there were percentages that went down. But look at what they did. 90 was 81. 59 was 50. Right? There's a difference in the pattern. This is 60 and 47, right? There's a difference, and keep in mind this is one month off. So this this um, is 60 is actually matching this 50, and this 67 is matching this But what I'm trying to say is if you look at the general pattern here, in some cases we noticed that there was more of a drop. So right off the bat, 90 goes to 81, 59. Now what these are are percentages of the all-time high. So in other words, in 2014... In the third month after the all-time high, you had 59% of the all It was almost halved. It was halved by the fourth month. You'll notice that this is actually one month shifted, almost exactly the same. But you'll notice that these numbers got a little bit smaller. Let's see the 31s and the 28s. I think this is a macro, macro pattern. I think what this is indicating is that the macro pattern itself with the 14, 18, 22, that the macro pattern itself contains another macro pattern above that, which is that the drops that we have are going to be sharper. That would mean that we would drop quicker and harder, although we're following the pattern of when we drop and when we rise we are dropping harder and more. So the percentage of the value of the coins 
is lower than it was in 18, which was lower than it was in 14. That's the drop, and that's the percentage of all-time highs. Of course, the coins themselves are worth much more than they were back then, 10 times more, but it's still um, the pattern that we're looking at. Now, what we wanted to check today to be specific is about nine months or so after an all-time high. You see all these dates, right? This is a 21, 20. We're going back to 18. Here's 2018, okay? In 2018 and 2022, here's the all-time highs, which are in the December and January time frame of 1718. Just they were slightly earlier in 21. Uh, there's a you know a slight one-month shift going on, but no big deal. Counting nine months after that, do we see a lift? You see how this drops. This is last month, uh, you know, you know, or the month before. And you see how it lifts back up and then it drops again. You see this? So this is the last couple months when it's been really low, approaching 20 or even below 20, right? So it drops, and then it comes back up, and it drops, and it comes back up. This is when it really had the big dip, right? Back at the, in, the, in, the, uh, in the first quarter, the end of the first quarter, look. D drop, come back up. Drop, come back up. And then drop. When it drops this next time, after the 10th or 11th month, you see this? Boom. 3,000s for multiple months. Look at this very carefully. Look at this pattern from 2018. What does that mean to us? Let me switch back to the camera so I can explain. Okay, so what this means to us is very simple. We have been tracking a macro pattern. It has been working for 12 years. We started talking about it before the halving of 2020. Then the halving occurred. All the things that were supposed to happen after that occurred. Then we knew when the all-time high was coming in 2021. It was coming um, at the end of the year. We, we got one early, which was very fun and interesting. We got the main one in November. Then we tracked the drop every single time, all three times this has happened in the last 12 years, we had an immediate drop. We tracked the immediate drop. Then we had a little bump up and made people happy for a minute. Went back down. Now we see a little bump up. So the last few days we've had this 24 uh, Bitcoin, which it dropped below 20, so now people are feeling pretty comfortable. It may go 25, 26, it may go even up to 30. But what we're looking at, at the end of the third quarter, so this is the middle of the third quarter right now, so from the middle of the third quarter to the end, we're looking at a little pop, it's, it's a little bump, it's a little, little positivity. But what's going to happen is, and this is the prediction section, right, which so far has worked for 12 straight years. What's going to happen is, it's going to drop again. And you're going to know that the macro pattern is real when we are under 20 by the end of the year. So when Bitcoin goes back down, October, November, by December, January, February, we are sitting for several months at this 16, 18, whatever it is. Could go as low as 10,000, could hover around 20. But the low, low, low point is still coming. Right now we're having this little pop. Everybody's super happy. You can run the percentages of what 24 compared to 20 is. See what the pop looks like. You can run all that. All those numbers match perfectly. Um, we're at the numbers we're supposed to be at in the pattern. So the bottom line is if we see it continue to rise and we finish the year off with a $30,000 Bitcoin, we know that this pattern has been violated and we go. We need to go back into micro patterns instead of macro patterns. If we see a little bit of a bump here for a month or two and then it goes back down and goes even lower and we're in the teens for Bitcoin at the end of the year, then we will know once and for all this macro pattern has held. Now we know exactly when the all-time high is coming. So what do we do for in 23? What do we know about 23? Well, we can go back simply by going out here and going back. We can head over to 2019, which is what 2023 is. You see it? We can go back to 2015 which is what 2023 is. 
So 15 equals 19 equals 23. And you can see it. Look. Okay. So take take the way but the way past. Okay, you see that we had a high all-time high here, Bitcoin, all-time high, right? And then you see that we're 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 in 2013, and this is because there's been a there's been a, back here there's been a halving. It's been climbing. Okay, there's the halving. Now it climbs up, and you'll notice that we reach almost a thousand dollars on Bitcoin. Okay, and this is in the end of 2013. So at the end of the year is when the all-time high happens. It happened in 13, it happened in 17, it happened in 21. Okay, that's when the all-time high happened. Then it drops. See how it goes? Badoosh. Now it falls out, and we're here. So this is so look at where we're at. Now this is all the way back in 2014, guys. Look. We drop out. Then you have a little pop. See, it comes back up. That's what's been happening recently. Then it goes back down. And you notice how it stays in that 300 range. So it's about, you know, a third. And then it drops. And look what happens. 2015, the whole year is in the pooper. Okay? You're talking about 25% for the whole year. Okay? Now, in our case, that would be 25% would be low 20s. And if it drops more than that, of course, which is the macro pattern's macro pattern, it would mean that we're looking at um, below 20 for all of 2013. Let's go forward, and we see in 2017, here comes the next all-time high. And then, you know, see, see you, can look at the, you can look at the chart, you see? Here's the halving, 2016. So, a year later, here we go. We're coming in with the all-time highs, just like we're supposed to. Then it drops, and you notice it drops... Pops up a little, drops again. Now look where we dropped this time. We're dropping to 3,000 right around the end of the year and the beginning of the next year. And then it's a little bit better, right? We have a little pop in the middle. So we get back up to about 50% and we drop again. And what we're headed for, of course, is the next halving, which is here in 2020. Okay, so what that means for us, if we track that pattern, because it matches, it added a little bit of a pop in, in, in 19, which is kind of cool. So 2023 equals 2019. So what happens? We see it pop right now, then we see it drop back off, then we see it go real, real low by the end of the year. Beginning of next year, first quarter of 23, it's horrifying. It's this, this is like, you know, super duper low. So we're talking about probably... Uh, mid-teens or something like that for the Bitcoin. We're watching that happen. Then it'll slowly creep up. Something like the middle of the year. You know, the summertime. Something like the summertime we'll see a pop. It may even get back up to 50%, which would be, in our case, in the 30s. We'd be looking at the 30s in the middle of 23. Now, if we're following this pattern, and we do see a big drop in this uh, first quarter. So the, the, the very end of 22, beginning of 23, lowest numbers ever. If we see that, this is our buy time, right? Because this right here is going to be the maximum return if you were to buy when it's the maximum low. And you'll notice that this is the maximum low. You see this, these dates here? These are the maximum lows. This is the very beginning of 19, which is the very beginning of 23 for us. There'll be a nice pop. We can make a little bit of money. You better pull some stuff out in the summer. But what you're waiting for is the having to come. And this is going to be 24 around May. Same as this. Which means you can see what's going to happen. It rises very nicely. You see this? Very nice rises. Nice pops. Everybody's getting super excited. Now, these are averages. The all-time high was about 67, 68. So this is all time, this is average, but look, just pop, 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 right? This is when all the action started happening. Then it levels out a little bit, and you're like, wow, and then here it is. This is when the all-time high month is, which is November of 21. So we're tracking that. We had an early pop, all-time high, then a bigger pop, all-time high at the end of the year. But that pattern matches, and then if you go into 22, you see that 22 matched um, across the board. It, it drops and matches. So, having said all that, simply to say 
that we are still on the macro pattern. It is still holding and we have one or two final tests. If we see a massive drop below 20 again by the end of the year, we'll know the macro pattern's holding. And so far it's held for 12 straight years. And I've predicted the numbers every month for the last year and a half, two years. So we're following that pattern. Give or take, I mean, there's a little month fluctuation, a few percentage fluctuation. It did drop more percentage-wise. So there are a little fluctuations. You've got to be careful. None of this is guaranteed. But we're tracking it. We're analyzing it all the time. My point in saying all this is our big final test is we see a huge drop at the end of the year in the beginning of 23. We look at that $16,000 Bitcoin in January, whatever it is, and we say to ourselves, we really on, are on this pattern. Now, if you don't believe it still, even though that'll have been three years since the having, and it'll be 13 years of tracking the macro pattern, if you still don't believe, then you watch that low in the first quarter of 23, and then you watch it pop in the middle, and it'll pop back up into the 30s, and then it'll drop back off again. If you see all that, and we end the year still fairly low, as we go into 24, I mean, I'm making a full year prediction. So you're, if this all happens, you're going to know for sure. So just track it. But I'm waiting for my last signal. And my last signal is a little bump right here where we're in the 24 or 25 happy zone, right? And then crashing by December back below 20, January, February, sitting in the teens. And then I'm going to know that we're in the Mac. That's my final test. I've had four testing patterns. They've all played out perfectly. I'm waiting for uh, the first quarter of 23. When I see us completely in the dumper, the first quarter of 23, then I know. And that's when I'm going to do the primary buying because then, then I'm going to know I'm getting ready for 24 and 25. Um, so that's me. That's what I'm doing. You don't have to do the same thing. But we have been tracking this pattern for a very long time. Um, go back and look at it. Do your own research. Look at all the numbers. Do all the math. You can make some crazy chart like I did. And just get a handle on what's really going on. Because everything is not weekly or monthly. Everything is in four or five year patterns. And if you track that pattern and you have some patience, it should pay off pretty dramatically. So anyway... Thanks for playing. This is Dr. Chef, Dr. Chef's Crypto. I'd appreciate it since if ever, whoever knows this may well get really rich. So, uh, you know, no guarantees it's crypto. But I would definitely suggest liking and subscribing. That way, if you hit that little notification bell, you can know when things are happening. But please share this with your friends. Anybody that knows anything about finance, anything that's about crypto, I hope they see the channel. hope they get a chance to check out some of the content. And I hope it helps. hope it helps people. So that's it. Um, we're still in the summer. We're still having warm, beautiful days, hence the shirt. Um, I'm going to get back out there in the sun and have some fun. And thank you for playing Dr. Chef, Dr. Chef's Crypto, um, signing off. Thanks.